morning, everybody, and welcome to this service for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Where's the time going? As I've said, we are still in the Easter season. We still will be for another couple of weeks. So we still have that feeling of the resurrection and the joy of knowing that Christ is alive and he's come back and he's working with his people to build his kingdom. Today's service was specifically thinking about dwelling in God's house. Our reading will concentrate on that and our address, and you're lucky today because it's being given by Canon David Trustrum, will also think about dwelling in God's house and what that means for each one of us. So as we start our service, let's just still our hearts and minds with our opening prayer. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. So let us recognise his presence with us now. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship him together. And let us do that with our first hymn. And it is a wonderful hymn. It's one of my favourites. And it is, let us build a house where love can dwell. one of my favourite hymns. I haven't known it that long, but I love it. Um, it's got some wonderful, it's got a wonderful melody that's easy to pick up. It's got some really meaningful words and the message there, wow, about building God's house, about everybody coming together, no matter who they are, no matter where they're from, no matter how old they are, what colour they are, whatever they are, it's about all coming together and affirming, encouraging and enabling each other as we seek to build God's kingdom together. But I wonder, as we were singing those words or watching them in front of us as they came across our screen, 
Could we really honestly say that we're owning those words all the time? Can we honestly say that we are behaving in the way that we're just singing about? Can we honestly say that we are all working together to build God's house in this world so that it can be a true beacon of his presence for all to see? Well, if the answer to any of those questions is a no, then now's our opportunity to say sorry, to come before God in penitence and faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. And the response to, in your mercy, forgive us, is, Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. And God, who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I will now ask Anne-Marie Trustrum to bring us our Bible reading and she will be followed by David, who will bring us the address. Today's Bible reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. 
Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or at least, believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Fiona, for inviting me to give the talk today. I'm recording this in the comfort of my own home at Hensmead in New Road, and it's the first time I've ever preached to an iPhone, so please forgive me if things go a bit wrong. In our church services, we have a prayer that says that we believe in God, and this prayer is called the Creed. But today's Gospel reading from John chapter 14 seems to go the other way round. It reminds us of how much God believes in us. Jesus is with his first disciples. He called them and he spent three wonderful years with them. But now he's about to leave them. It's the night before the crucifixion. And he just wanted them to know that he truly believed in them. Let not your hearts be troubled, he said. He trusted these men to continue his work, and amazingly, that's just what they did. They took his message of good news to the towns and villages around Jerusalem and healed the sick. Later, others took the good news to Asia and Europe until within 300 years, the mighty Roman Emperor himself, Constantine, had become a Christian and declared Christianity the faith of the Roman Empire. These far-off islands where we live had heard about Jesus within 400 years. What an amazing thing those first disciples did. Jesus believed in them and they knew it. And Jesus told us that God believes in each one of us. He created us. He calls us his sons and his daughters. And he loves it when we acknowledge him and pray to him as our father. But he loves us just the same. He believes in us. He trusts us to care for one another, to be compassionate and forgiving, to look after this beautiful planet home that he has given us, and to care for the creatures that share it with us. And even more amazingly, Jesus trusts us with eternity. As he prepared for his own suffering and death and made these farewells to his disciples, he made a wonderful promise to them. I'm going ahead of you to prepare a place for each one of you. In my Father's house are many rooms. We don't have to be especially good or religious to be accepted by him. Remember how he said to the penitent thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. Hopefully we do believe in God, but just as importantly, he believes in us. He challenges us, he stretches us, he calls us to do wonderful things for him. And in this current pandemic, we've seen many examples of people who have loved their neighbour and gone the extra mile and made great sacrifices, including the greatest one, to serve their fellow men and women. And whoever we are, we are saving lives just by staying at home. This is also a sacrifice and a hard thing to do, but we are saving lives by doing it. So be encouraged. God believes in you and he believes in me. 
He knows we can do it, and he knows that we will. Amen. Thank you, David and Anne-Marie. But you're really pleased to see some faces other than mine. Well, now we remind ourselves of the God whom we believed in and the fact that we are all part of his family in our affirmation of faith. And we say together, we believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Probably thinking it's about time we had another hymn. And I'd agree with you. Our next hymn has been specially chosen by our, that wonderful stalwart of our community, Jean Hammond. It's a hymn that she loves and she'd actually said that one day she'd like it at her funeral. But I'm saying no, not yet. And she wants it just to remind everybody that it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't even matter whether you acknowledge him. God is there. All we have to do is to be still and listen and look for his presence. So be still for the presence of the Lord. And our collect or special prayer for today. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I will now ask Jackie Collins to come and lead us in our prayers. 
Heavenly Father, we bring our prayers to you today during this time of turmoil and uncertainty. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his Cabinet, that they may make wise decisions, communicate clearly and work for the benefit of all. As the country celebrates the 75th anniversary of VE Day, we give thanks for the brave men and women of World War II who sacrificed so much to serve our country. They fought for peace, that the world might never again know such violence and destruction, and for justice, so that prejudice and oppression might never again take root. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God, give skill, compassion and resilience to health care workers who are caring for the sick and the seriously ill. Renew and strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work many may be restored to health. Give your wisdom to those searching for a cure, for the scientists working on a vaccine and the researchers analysing data and finding trends. Lord, we give thanks for our local community, for the notes through letterboxes offering support and help, for the people shopping for others and for collecting medication. We give thanks for the internet, telephones and technology that connects us to our friends and loved ones. We pray for the key workers who are keeping our nation going, for shop and supermarket staff, our dustmen and postmen, delivery drivers, teachers and the media. Gracious God, give strength to those who have no choice but to go to work and hope to people whose income has disappeared. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father God, we pray that you will protect those throughout the world who are the most vulnerable to the coronavirus. We lift up the elderly, those with pre-existing medical conditions and those without good access to medical care. God of compassion, be close to them that who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. We pray for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. For those who are bereaved and grieving, may God be their comfort, strength and shield. May we hold in our hearts all those whose family or friends have died. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and for all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. And would you please join me in saying together the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we're now going to sing our final hymn. And this one was chosen by David. I think that he probably chose it because it is a wonderful hymn. He probably chose it because, as we heard this week, he is, an anim uh, he is 
an astronomer, an amateur astron astronomer, and he loves looking at the sky at night and the stars and the moon. No doubt he loves thinking about the way that God pl placed each one of them there. I know he loves the countryside and gives thanks to God for the way that he has placed all the different plants and the trees and enabled them to grow. And we have also heard that he thinks God's a bit, good, bit, bit wonderful, that he trusts us as well. Wow. So would you please sing, How Great Thou Art. done. I knew you'd belt that one out. So our closing prayers and the response is your kingdom come, your will be done. Through acts of loving kindness, your kingdom come, your will be done. Through care for those in need, your kingdom come, your will be done. Through friendship shown to lonely people, 
your kingdom come, your will be done. Through keeping asking awkward questions, your kingdom come, your will be done. Through never give it, giving up on those who feel lost, your kingdom come, your will be done. Through constant care and persistent prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done. Amen. And our final prayer of blessing. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and all those who you love and care for, now and always. Amen. And I hope to see you all next week. And as we fade out from this service, please listen to a very special hymn you heard a bit of it on the way in. This one was chosen by Anne-Marie. So God bless and stay safe. <laughs>